Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Today, we would see the top 5 best immutable distros, and what each distro is trying to achieve to make your life better. As discussed in the last video, distro immutability is all about making your OS invincible to have the maximum security and reliability possible, and at the same being consistent in case something breaks. Let's summarize a little bit of the concepts that are involved in achieving this. First and foremost, immutability. This translates to a system that is read-only for other users and programs, except the root user. Secondly, consistency. This involves the ability to update the system in one go. It is checked at the end if successful. If it is not successful, a rollback process will occur without any consequence. This is to ensure you have a working system at all times. For more details on this, ensure you check my previous video where every concept was discussed extensively. If you prioritize long-term stability and are willing to trade some cutting-edge features for extended support, then be on the lookout for these distros coming up very soon. This selection is based on the review of other users. I've compiled it. Your opinion or comment is highly welcomed. Feel free to drop a comment. At number 5, Vanilla OS. As an Ubuntu-based immutable Linux distro, this OS redefines system stability and security through its innovative architecture. Just like Silverblue and OpenSUSE, it combines atomic updates, containerized package management, and user-centric tooling. Let's delve into some of the features that make this distro stand out from the rest. Vanilla OS uses AB root for atomic transaction updates. It uses an A or B partition. One boots the system, and updates are written to the other. When an update happens, it is applied to the inactive partition. That way, if there is a failure, the system can revert to the working partition. That's the atomic part of the update. Either the update is fully applied or not at all. It is important to note that rollback is automatic if the update fails, which is important for stability. There is, however, some downside to this distro. The first is that it requires two root partitions, meaning more disk space. The second is that a reboot is required after an update, which can interrupt daily use. The process is seamless and reduces downtime. Moving to number four, Nix OS. This distro, with a unique package management and system configuration, is designed with power users in mind. Support Cinnamon, KD, GNOME, Pantheon, OpenBox, etc., which can be selected at install. Let's see some of the key features. Declarative configurations. Nix OS allows user to define their entire system configuration in a single configuration file. With this, users can effortlessly reproduce their environment on another machine. This feature is appealing to users who value consistency and reproducibility. Ideal for server deployment and development environments. Package management. This comes from its extensive repository and unique ability to handle multiple versions of the same package. However, it is important to note that some packages require additional configuration or workarounds, which could be frustrating for beginners. Steep learning curve. For those unfamiliar with programming concepts or declarative configuration, they could find it difficult to get around things. They need to spend a significant amount of time reading documentation and experimenting to get things working for them. Desktop usability. Just as said earlier, Nix OS is perfect for a power user because it requires more expertise to set up and configure compared to mainstream distributions like Ubuntu or Fedora. Configuring the desktop environments, drivers, and peripherals takes additional time and effort. Coming up at number three, MicroOS. MicroOS is built by the OpenSUSE community. It is designed primarily for hosting container workloads with automated administration and patching. This OS might just be the easiest to use immutable distro on this list. Let's see some of the features that make this possible. Workloads. Applications are installed in containers rather than the root file system, meaning you can install it without the need for a reboot. Transactional updates. Your system is updated in a single transaction instead of in bits. This can be done while the system is still running other tasks like working or gaming. Changes are applied at reboot. Rollbacks. If there is an issue with the update, you could easily roll back to an old BTRFS snapshot without consequence. Secured updates. 
Packages and reports are signed and verified by the build system and sent via HTTPS. Finally, no updates are done in case of dependency conflicts. Let's hold on for a minute. If you're finding the information in this video useful, kindly support the channel by subscribing, liking, and turning on the notification bell icon. This will motivate me to keep making videos like this even better in the future. Thanks. Moving on to number two, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is a very underrated distro and is an absolute definition of stability in Linux distro. With this distro, you can be sure to have updates that don't break the system. Whether you're a new user or not, I highly recommend this distro for you. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is a rolling release. But one common downside with this kind of release is that a package update might depend on another package that may be lagging in its release. Instead of causing complications, the maintainers have resolved any such inter-package dependencies, which allows the update process to go smoothly. Adopting a rolling release ensures your system is equipped with the newest feature soon after release, thus delivering a smooth experience. Updates are tested with OpenQA before being sent. For gaming, this distro is committed to giving you a smooth gaming experience. Technology packages like NVIDIA, Mesa, Vulkan, Wine, Proton, Pipewire, and Wayland all contribute to achieving this and are in a state of constant evolution. Tumbleweed offers a highly flexible environment, which gives you the freedom to tweak and tailor the system according to your preference. Lastly, should in case anything go wrong, whether during updates, you easily roll back to the previous state within minutes using the Snap Rollback tool. If you want a distro that strikes a balance between usability and up-to-date package, try out OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Finally, at number one, Fedora Silverblue. This distro is insanely stable. It is user-friendly and comes with GNOME Desktop, a beautiful, high-quality desktop built on the latest open-source technology. I've never experienced a single notable issue since I installed it. This distro is the perfect choice for any casual user who doesn't know a lot about Linux kernel tricks. For someone who needs a PC for a browser and daily used apps like LibreOffice, Telegram, GIMP, etc., then opt in for Silverblue because it can serve without the possibility of breakdown. Why Fedora Silverblue? Reliable and atomic. This is the primary focus of this video. Each version is updated for 13 months. During the update process, the whole system is updated in one go. It allows you to keep working while updates are installed. In case something goes wrong during this process, then the update will not be applied and your system will be rolled back to the previous state. The possibility for the update to break down your PC is one in a million. In order words, you would always have a working and safe computer. Note, be sure to reboot the system to apply the update. Containerized, graphical apps, programs, and CLI utilities all run inside containers and are installed via Flatpak and APX technology respectively and are kept securely separate from the base system, meaning they don't interfere with your system even during an update. Developer-friendly. With ToolBX, you can keep all your development tools neatly organized. So, if you want to distro on a leading edge where packages are made available as soon as they are tested, then you could try out Fedora Silverblue. Silverblue? is constantly improving and updating while listening to user suggestions. This brings us to the end of our video for today. If you enjoyed it or not, if you feel there is any area that needs improvement, kindly leave a comment in the comment box below. Your feedback and criticisms are highly welcomed. Thank you and have a nice day.